Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today is day number five of my Mater Surprise Extravaganza. So if you're just joining me, maybe you just found my channel, I am sharing seven projects from Monday through to Friday using a different Mater Surprise mechanism with a different license from Craftstash. So today I'm going to be using the gorgeous, this is absolutely beautiful, I'm so looking forward to using it. It's the RSPB Perfect Christmas. You can see here, and I'll show you that all in more detail in a moment. And I thought it would look lovely with my 3D display cards and stand set. I want to create a really festive, wintry scene with the ephemera. And I've got some of my snowfall acetate here. I've already cut the background paper there, which I'll show you in a moment. But I just thought it works perfectly. So I'm going to be focusing on these two. I'm going to use one of the sentiments from one of the sets here. But I also thought it could look nice. If you imagine you heat emboss all of these characters in gold and then you could cut them out and build them all up inside there as well. But you've got these gorgeous, this is your Christmas animals and this is your Christmas birds. It's it's wonderful. It's such a lovely set. And even these images just look lovely stamped in just a simple colour as well. You don't even have to colour them all in. You've got some nice sentiments. I hope your Christmas is full of warmth and sparkle. May warmth and love come your way this festive season. Happy Christmas. May your Christmas uh, be full of wonder. You've got Merry and Bright there and you've got Frosty Kisses as well. I think I'm going to use either this one or this one. In the paper pack, so for those of you that just like your papers, this one has toppers as well, which is lovely. So you've got some nice little toppers and all those different sentiments there and words and the images at the bottom. You get four of each sheet and then you've got this one here again. Nice, easy to cut out as well, these ones as well. So I might end up using one of them, we'll see. And then you've got this gorgeous image. And it's actually that one that I have cut a portion kind of up here because it will go inside the back of the card. So you get four again of that one. The gorgeous Ponsettia. You've got this other frame one here, which is really nice. And then you've got your pine cones and foliage. And I think that one, yeah, this is what I've started to use. You can see where I've cut that one out there. There's also a Creative Craft Products um, colour match pack as well. So if you want your mats and layers to all match, then you've got this pack here. So it's an 8x8 card pack, 250 GSM, and you get 12 sheets, three colours, and you get four of each. So that is all of the products. Like I said, I want to keep just the ephemera because I've already cut the pattern paper. So if you've not seen this die set before, it's up there as one of my most popular. Towers still continues to be a very popular collection of mine. My first Showstoppers collection and this one. They sell incredibly well. This is what I would call, it's a Showstopper, it's a, it's a standalone piece. It could be a nice piece of home decor, but I think it's one of those really nice keepsakes. Just to give you an idea, this is just at hand that I've got this one here, but I made this gift um, bag. So this gift bag will fit the card that I'm going to make today um, and you can find this over on my channel but inside here it's just one example I launched them with all different frames but you can see here this gorgeous card and this is what I'm going to be creating today now you can turn this into a gift box as well you can also add lights in here I've got tutorials showing you how to do that I've got so many different themes in this one as well it's a really I find it really easy to create with that um, and I just loved using the frame on the front of the uh, the gift bag there. So like I said, nice keepsake all together there. Okay, so you, need, you do need to cut um, a few bits, but it's easy to put together. So first of all, we'll start off with your strips here. So your crocodile teeth pieces, which is this long one here. You want to cut three of them. Two of them you want to cut down and you'll see... I've probably stuck over it. There is a tiny little arrow just under the tape here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seventh tooth in. It's on both of them. And you just want to cut above it right across. And you'll have these two pieces. So three pieces to cut and two of them you're going to trim down. The long one and a short one will be to go around your full circle. The other short one is going to work with the base. So you want to cut this plate here, which I've done. This is using the Noble Red cardstock from Creative Craft Products. It's really lovely and it goes perfectly with this collection. So I've got that one ready there and then you'll want to cut two of the largest semicircle there. So I've got one, two. That is all the pieces you need for the base, okay, which we'll go to later. These two here, so one long one and one shorter one, is going to be for the main top circle. 
With that, you want to cut yourself the largest circle here. And then I've cut that larger circle again with this pattern paper. And I think that would look nice up towards the corner because I'm going to have a lot of things built up around here. And then I've cut another one because I'm going to have the teeth all stuck around here and then this sandwiched in between. Or it may well be sandwiched the other way. Either way, cut two of them just to keep it nice and strong. Cut another circle in acetate if you want to add acetate. You don't have to, but I just thought this would look really nice. This is the Hunky Dory and it's called Snowfall Acetate. I brought a pack of 50 two years ago maybe now. It's still going strong, got loads in there. And then this one here is using the largest circle and the inverted scallop circle. You want to pop them together and just add a little bit of tape to hold it in place and then run that through your dye machine and you'll get this frame. You can also use this one if you want a plain frame. It will give you a slightly smaller aperture but a bigger ring so you can build and stick more on. Again, lots of examples showing both and you'll find them all on my display play stand and display playlist i will have it linked up here if not it will be linked at the end of the video and also if you're on facebook um follow my mixed up craft facebook page and if you go to albums you'll see all of my mater surprise albums are there these pieces here are your like i guess building tabs you want to cut two of these to make one you stick them together so your little tabs stick out either side it's slightly arched here so it will stick around the circle and what that allows so if you imagine this is stuck inside here, you can then build and stick things on so I can have some of the birds attached there and so on. And you can disguise them easily. I've cut myself four. I think that's going to be enough. But I can always cut some more if I need to. So that is everything you need. These pieces here are to have a swinging element. These are actually the same dies from my swinging mechanism. So if you've got that, then you'll know what those are. OK, so first of all, I'm going to take one of these circles here. And if you want, you can add these separate i like to stick it all together and work with one long piece so i'm just going to use my quick grab glue and just run that all down the side and then just line this up perfectly you want to make sure that your score lines along here line up now you'll see what i've done as well i need to mention that when i've die cut them all or any score lines i just go over them again using my scoreboard it just makes them much easier to fold and with these ones here, I've just ran some double-sided tape all the way down. And then you can just fold the teeth down. You can add um, liquid glue. I've used that in many tutorials. You do have a little bit more wiggle time with that. But I also find the tape works as well. Um, and obviously you get that instant grab with the, uh, the tape there. Okay, so you can see when they all fold in, this is going to become a circle. And it will fit perfectly on this one here. So it's up to you what size you want to start on. I've got my tab there on the right hand side. So I'm just going to take the backing off here. And then I like to fold this over. So I've got the sticky side here. And just tack the first couple down. And make sure that the fold is right up to the top there. Okay. And then I like to just work my way around. And I'm just pinching excuse all of the um the color on my hand there i've been doing a lot of crafting my poor hands plus a lot of diy as well in the house so i'm just pinching it as i work my way around just do a few at a time and then once you've kind of got it in place you can lay it down and i'm just looking out to the left hand side here and just kind of again just working it around can also do it this way so there's a few ways find find a way that works for you i'm just showing you all the different ways and then you can find which one works best and just go in this side each time just make sure it's really secure as you come around to here you'll see it will perfectly meet oh you can just get in there just add a little bit more glue just spread that out a little bit there we go okay and then just going to go around and just make sure that is all secure like so and then i'm going to add this one inside 
and it will be snug it's supposed to be so what i would suggest you do is add your glue in there first and then just stick it in and then i'm going to stick the patterned paper this by adding the two layers like i said it tidies it all up but if you use a construction glue in between it's going to make it so strong really really sturdy and obviously long lasting as well so just kind of curve that a little bit to get it in and it will just straight away give it that real nice circular shape and just go around just burnish it right into that shape but it is snug it's supposed to be if it was loose you wouldn't get that nice perfect circle now because i want to have this towards the top left i just need to make sure that you want these side joins equally on the sides here you could have it at the top if you want but i think they, they're better disguised when they're down here so again i'm just going to drop that one in slightly on the angle there yeah that looks good to me so because i'm adding the acetate i'm next going to decorate inside if i wasn't adding the acetate i would take my tape off of here and stick the frame on one thing you might want to do is just with the teeth when you use the thinner frame because it's a scallop you might get the odd little bit just poking out so i'm just going to stick them out and i'm just taking just the little tips off if you use the thicker frame with the other aperture that i showed you you won't have to do this but with the scallop because it obviously dips in you you might not i've made some and i've got away with it and i've not seen any but then there's been the odd time that i might be slightly wonky off to one side so you could always cut them once it's on as well you can kind of get your scissors in there and snip them away but it's easy to do it now and whilst i remember i'm going to just take those away plus the amount of decoration that goes into these you could easily stick something over them as well so lots of ways to disguise it if that does happen so again just going to make sure that's all strong so i've got three layers now stuck on top of each other so that will become nice and weighted like so i put tape around the front here so what i'm going to do is just pop this onto my frame and then i can just keep placing it down when i add each of the different kind of elements and the animals and i can just get a nice idea of how everything's going to look so just placing that down over the top i'll just fold that all back in again and see how we're going to get this very cute scene coming together there promise it does all fit okay so the fun part so i need these little bits here i'm just going to lay these out I mean, there is tons in here. I'm going to have some as well, I think, coming out. Um, and maybe if I just bring this bit in so you can get an idea. See, this is going to be underneath. I think it'd be nice to have, you know, for example, like the little rabbit could be outside. Look, so I love all the foliage. It'd be so nice to have, again, bits like that coming out as well. Like how nice, you know, these are going to look ooh, stuck around the frame. So I'll show you how these work. You just add a little bit of glue onto the tabs. And then like I said, it's slightly curved and it will sit in the curve of the circle here. If you do them in the same color, then they kind of blend in. You see, you can stick them right towards the front, towards the back, you can have a couple together. Or you've got your um, magpie there as well. If my Nan was here now, she'd um, be looking for another one. So there you go, Nan, don't worry. One for sorrow and two for joy. And we've got a robin as well. I've got to have a robin in here okay like so and then you could add a little glue to the end of his wing and then just attach it onto there and then if you didn't want to see that you could stick this big piece of foliage for example and it just allows you to have things that look like they're floating and just kind of you know hanging out and again i might have another one down here i can attach more to it i really want to fill it i really want to pack it out yeah so i'm just going to pop it on high speed now and um get this all decorated Okay, so this is what I've got so far, which looks really nice when you pop the frame over the top there. So I'm going to peel off the backing, start from this end. 
So I need to, sometimes it's better not to decorate. <laughs> I probably should have left that until after I've done this. So I want to make sure that this, I always like to start from the join and just kind of push that in to the edge of the circle, like so. Just get that tucked in place. Just kind of lift it up there, like so. Once you've got that one in, just give it a really good press. Like so, and then this, I always find the, the top is easier to put on because it's it's already in that kind of circle shape. So I'm just guiding it around until it all lines up. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. That looks good to me. I'm gonna show you now how to make the base. So you wanna take off the backing. And I like to start with the end with the tab and you want to take one of these and stick it down like this. So the fold runs flush with the bottom of this piece. Now you're to start with, you'll have quite a sharp kind of curve to work around. So just again, similar to how I just did the circle, I'm just pinching it with one hand and then just working my way all the way over along there right the way around and you'll see it will perfectly fit at the end give that all a good burnish and then you want to take this piece and you're going to connect it to this end here now i'm going to completely seal mine so it's a closed box you could also put some weighted um, maybe a little bit of sand in there you know like i said the lights if you want to do that let that just grab Whilst that's drying, I'm going to take backing off of this one. And then again, line up your edge there. And then just work that all the way around. You can also add pom-pom trim to this side. You can imagine you could put a load of fake snow all over this. Ribbon trim. Honestly, there are so many. And if you're not a member of my Facebook group, Mixed Up Crafters, then head over there if you're on Facebook because people still regularly upload different cards using this set. So you can get lots of inspiration there as well. Okay, and now this will go in and it will act like a little box. Like I said, it could be a gift box or if you want to be able to access batteries, you'll see how that all sits in there and then that will go on top like so. But I'm going to close mine off completely. So I'm going to add my glue all down here down the side and down this one as well you might want to do one at a time but i'm just gonna pop them all in it is a bit messy my hands are covered in glue as it is <laughs> i'm coming to the end of the series now though so and i'm getting my nails done soon i'm just gonna now just push against the sides there it will eventually grab whilst that's drying i like to attach this using hot glue now, I know not everybody will want to do that. So if you don't want to use hot glue, then maybe use a 3D gel, something that it can just squish around. Um, so it's really secure. You could use your construction glue, Kalau, or a quick grab glue, things like this. But I don't know long term if they're really going to hold. But I mean, I've just showed you um, that one. That was one of my samples. I've got loads more on my shelf and they're still really, you know, good. And I've moved house as well with them all and they've all you know, stood the test. So I'm just gonna add a dollop of hot glue there. And then, oh, I need to look at this straight on. So you just wanna make sure that you've got it all facing the way you want. You could do one each side and they could look like Mickey Mouse ears. That's quite a fun one as well. So I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute or just let it sit there. Doesn't take too long and I'm just gonna keep applying some pressure so that's all secure as well. So now if I just turn this on its side, how beautiful is this? This also makes a nice mantle clock. You could have a working clock in there as well, sitting on the acetate. Like I said, so many different ways to use this. Now, sentiment. Do I stamp one or do I take one from the from the paper pack here? Because I I think they're a little bit bigger in here, which I think this card needs. That Merry Christmas is nice. And then these are all kind of 
little subtitle. So I'm going to have a play around. I'm probably going to cut my sentiment out from here. And I'm also going to carry on decorating this a bit more because there's so much lovely like foliage. It would be nice to... But then if I heat emboss it in gold, that would look nice too. Leave it with me. I get very indecisive with things like this now. I like to just play around. And um, I think I just want to stick with bits of foliage along the bottom. So yeah, I'm going to have a little play around and then I will be back. Okay, so there is the finished card and my goodness, I'm in love with it. <laughs> I've been doing this lately. I've been making too many Christmas cards that I just want to keep for myself. But I'm hoping that whoever receives this will enjoy it and keep it for some time anyway. But yeah, I think it's lovely. So you can hopefully see what I mean about it being more of a keepsake. You could have a very big number inside here. You could have a gift inside this part as well. You could have this as like the opening. There's lots of ways to do it. You can also have it so it's more like a gift bag. So you just pop the bottom half portion here and then you just have this open and you can fill it with things. There's just so many options it's a re out of all of the dies that i'm using this week this is the most i think value for money i think you can do so much with this gift bag gift box keepsake put lights in it you know there's just a huge amount you can do with this set so take advantage of the offers that are running this week if you don't have this set and there's discounts also on the rspb collection as well you'll be able to find all the product that i've used by clicking here or in the links below if you've not subscribed to my channel just click here and then you won't miss out the rest of the series and everything else that i have to share in the future and i will have the playlist with this die set so you can see it being used for other themes and um, in other collections as well so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this card from me today and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.